React interviews can be really tough. Even if you know React in depth, let's say you've been working in it, but when some of the oral questions are asked, uh, sometimes it throw you off your game. So it's better to be prepared. So today we're gonna discuss some of those most commonly asked React interview questions and how to answer them. And in which situation some of those questions are going to be asked. And we're also gonna discuss why some of those questions are not going to make sense even though people ask them. And welcome to Texas Tutorials. Okay, so one of the first question is, name lifecycle methods and their purpose. This is probably most commonly asked question, so you need to know this very well. So I would suggest, pause the video, write down all the lifecycle method, their purpose, and then where they fit in React component lifecycle. And then you can tell your answer with mine. Okay, so this is how you will answer this question. First of all, you need to mention that lifecycle methods are changing. Uh, for example, if you're using a earlier version of React in 2017 or so, some of those life lifecycle methods are have changed. And moving further, if you are going to use React hooks, React hooks has completely different way to handle lifecycle methods. So I'm going to explain you the current lifecycle methods. You need to mention this to the, the interviewer so that he would understand that you know all of these. Also, there are two phases when you render a component, the initial render and re-render, and they have different lifecycle methods. So the first is render, when the component initially renders. The first hook runs is a constructor. This runs only once in the during the initial phase. The job of constructor is to set the initial state, and this is the only place we, where you can do that. And this is the only place where you can say this dot state. After this, you have to use this dot set state if you want to change the state. So constructor, it's pretty simple. Now let's move to the second lifecycle hook called get derived state from props. Now this is actually a replacement of an old method called component will receive props, which is going to be deprecated soon. Compared to that method, this method is actually static. It runs right after the constructor. It, ha it has role in initial render and also re-render phase. The job of this method is, as its name suggests, get derived state from props. So actually most of this lifecycle method, if you, if you understand the name of it, you would know its job, which means it tries to get the derived state from the change in props. So if the ch uh, props changes, you need to uh, set the state accordingly. Now. It's a static method. Why is a static method? That is also another question interviewer ask. Why would you have something static? It is because you don't want user to ac access this keyword directly inside the method. Because static methods are actually class method, not instance methods, which means you not do you cannot do like this dot, uh, some method name, and so you cannot execute that. So you cannot directly set state uh, using this dot set state. So it protects you from doing all kind of mistakes. So how does it actually change the state? Well, you would return the new state and it, it does it. If you return null, which means there is no change in the state. And this method is rarely used. So the next lifecycle method after get derived state from props is render. I think everybody probably have to use this method because this is where you return your JSX. This is where you say, okay, this is the body of my uh, component, right? This is the only method that is mandatory to have. What you cannot do in this method is you cannot set state here. Otherwise, you'd go in an infinite loop. The nef next lifecycle method is component did mount. This runs after component is actually mounted. And the use of this method is if you're using, let's say, some third party library, some charting library, uh, and such. And so basically, you, you can notify that, that okay, I am on, the dome is ready now. So you can make uh, changes accordingly. Because let's say if you're using third party chart components, then you need to have the dome ready before you, uh, that component uses it. All right, so the next phase of lifecycle method is re-render. 
this is where something changes your state prop and react component needs to re-render itself and this could happen every time there's a change right which means this lifecycle would run many times so very first lifecycle method that runs is it's the same lifecycle method we looked at previously get derived state from props which is a static method so we don't need to it does the same thing as it does in initial render then it runs something that is new that only runs in a re-render re lifecycle method called should component update now what is the purpose of this lifecycle method in the re-render phase you need to make a decision if you really need if this component really need to be updated or not and why would you need it let's say whenever somebody says set state a re-render runs but you could be set, uh, setting the same state again which means you're going to have the same result so do you really need to re-render the component maybe not so you can make that decision inside this lifecycle hook basically it, it will give you access to your previous state and a new state you can compare it and then if you return true that means it re it renders it if you return false it, it stops there and so there is no render after that render again is the same as the initial render and the next lifecycle hook is get snapshot before update we can call it pre-commit phase. Render doesn't mean it has rendered. Mount really happens after this method. So just before it gets rendered, you need to, if you need to do something, then you can do it here. This actually is replacing another method uh, that was previously there, component will update. And the reason for this particular method is re uh, React recently introduced uh, lazy loading or async rendering you could call it so sometimes there is a delay between if if you render a component and and its next phase so let's say if user does something in between like scroll or change the size of the window then you need to remember uh, where the scroll was before so you can do something after the render so you can remember the scroll position text position etc and the last lifecycle method is component did update. So in the initial render, it's component did mount. This one, because it's a re-render, it says component did update. It really means I am done. This was the component is updated. And whatever you can do with component did mount, you can do it here as well. So I'm not going to repeat that. And I also forgot to mention one more method. Uh, this is not initial rendering this is not re-rendering this is when the component basically dies and when it unmounts so just before it unmounts if you want to do something you can do it here because there is no such thing as component did unmount because it's already unmounted it doesn't exist anymore okay our next question is why do we use arrow functions in react or they can ask you what is the advantage of using arrow functions in react so pause the video think about it and you can tell him my answer with yours okay so the simple answer is in react you can have on click handles which is not actually a, a, a class method it's actually a class property so you have to differentiate between what is a method and what is a property so here in this example i have a component where render is a class method but login handle is actually a class property and it's confusing to a lot of people because they have worked with classes where they do not have property directly assigned like this that they usually have constructor and inside you would have like this dot login handle equal to some function but in the newer version of react you can simply define property like this now the problem is if if you say equal to this as a regular function, then we all, as we all know, if you have a function inside a function and inside you have this keyword, this keyword belongs to then this function. It doesn't belong to the class that is outside. You want this means class. So there are two ways to do it. Either you would define as an arrow function, in which case, 
since arrow, arrow functions doesn't have its own this, it automatically uh, takes this from its lexical scope. So its immediate parent, which is class here. So this is a much easier solution. And the second way to do it is actually you have to bind this back to the class inside the constructor. So this seems to be a much easier way to do it, arrow functions. And they will also ask you, how can you define state like this? Why there's no constructor? Uh, and why are you not setting this inside a constructor? And you can say that, well, this is actually an experimental. React is using experimental JavaScript, which means this feature is not actually inside a JavaScript. This is similar to TypeScript, where you can define something that uh, that is not actually in the JavaScript, but it gets transfiled into, uh, let's say, ES5 version of JavaScript. So this gets since this gets transpiled, it's okay to use an experimental version. Now, why would somebody ask this question, and why somebody should not be asking this question? Um, I would say if you are using arrow function in JavaScript which most of you are, you need to know why are you using it. And a lot of people don't know, especially the confusion occurs because of, you know, most of the people use this latest syntax in React, but they, they don't realize that this is actually an experimental syntax. And all those on-click handles looks like methods, which they are not. So now you know, so you can answer it correctly. So why should not, why you should not ask this question? I think it's okay to ask this question. As long as the interviewee understand that error functions don't have its own this, so it would take this from its lexical scope, I would take that answer. All right, so next question is how to prevent components from re-rendering? Again, you can pause the video and think about it and tell you the answer. Okay, there are three ways to do it, uh, at least that I know. The first one is should component update. This is one of the lifecycle methods that we looked at when we analyze all the lifecycle methods. And this lifecycle method is part of the re-render cycle. So before the component is rendered, it checks, should I render it or not? So you can make that decision here in this lifecycle method. Either you can compare the state with the previous state, or you can just simply look at the new state and say, okay, if this is the state, I don't wanna render it. So if you return false, in this lifecycle method, it stops the rendering from here. The second way to do it is using React's pure component. A pure component, you don't have to use the should component update method. I think if you use pure component and should component update method together, then it would complain because then should component update is redundant because pure component actually compares, shallow compares the previous state and the new state and if they are the same, uh, then it stops rendering. It's automatic. You don't have to do it. So instead of saying, uh, when you build a, a class component, instead of saying that React uh, extend React component, you say extend React pure component. Again, this only works for class component. This is not for functional or presentation components. If you're using a presentation component, a functional component, you can use a React memo. This is works in a newer version of React and uses a technique called memoization. So if if you're rendering the same thing, if your inputs are the same, then the output should be the same. So in that case, what you should do is should not uh, you know return the same output, right? You should not recalculate the whole thing. And that's what a, Re a React memo does. I have a tutorial on uh, both of them. You can check it out. Okay, so why should one ask this question and why should not one ask this question? Uh, I think it is important question to, to be asked. If somebody would give you one answer, which is should component update method answer, I think that should be sufficient. You don't need to know pure component or React memo uh, because they may be only using one of them but if somebody knows pure component and react memo that means they have a little bit more knowledge they have been keeping up with technology even though they they don't use that in, in their project so that's a little brownie points okay so there are more questions that i need to go over in react however i think i'm gonna i don't want to make this video too long so i'm gonna split this video into two videos so stay tuned for the next video uh, and I'll provide the link at the end of this video.
And if you have any question on React interview question, or if you have encountered a question that I haven't covered yet, uh, please let me know uh, in, a, in a comment and then I'll make a video about it. And also um, tell me what's your experience and how would you answer a particular question. And I hope you enjoy this video. And if you did, please like, don't forget to like, subscribe and provide a nice comment. I'm always looking for translators. If you want to help me out, you can do so. I'll provide a link in the description and thank you.